first kick of the match. A player who's been in tremendous form. And City get the afternoon going, get their bid to reach the FA Cup fifth round going. Nicolas Otamendi, who has been linked with a move to Barcelona, which once upon a time would have been a significant step up, but the gap is closing rapidly. Maybe City, who are European champions at the end of this season, but that's to play out in the future as Carl Walker goes in, having made a mistake initially. Maybe Brady, former Manchester United junior, returning to the Burnley team, having been sent off at Huddersfield in his last appearance. Clipped up to Jesus. Mores. Danilo, he's trying to find Bernardo Silva. There seems to be a pattern with every game that's played on this pitch, Gary, in, in that the game starts and then City keep the ball for around about five minutes. On a big pitch like this, they're absolutely brilliant. Nobody can get near them, or very few can get near them. I saw them at Burton Albion, which is a narrower pitch, more difficult pitch, and it was a, a quite an even contest uh, at times. But every team they put out, they go for it, they don't let you off the hook, they try everything they possibly can to score as many as they possibly can, that's what I love about them. Fielding, OK, there were two or three youngsters in there, but by fielding aside, when you're 9-0 up from the first leg of the quality they did at Burton, they showed massive respect to that competition and to their opponents too. Absolutely. Good challenge from Dwight McNeil, who's really making waves now that he's a... Uh, becoming an established Burnley first-teamer at 19. Giving the ball away there, though. Said he didn't keep it long, which is rare. It's on Gibson. Tarkovsky. To go keep the Nick Pope. Walker. Starting to keep the ball away from Brady if he can, and he can with Edison's assistance. I don't think there's a goalkeeper in the world who likes the ball at his feet more than Edison does. More or less every goalkeeper has to do that now. Talk about Joe Hart, of course, that's why he left the club, because he wasn't comfortable doing that. Looking at Burnley, it looks as though they might be starting with a, a back three. It's hard to tell with everybody back behind the ball when City are attacking. seven at the back for long periods <laughs> you never know they might it, it, it's a, a free hit this one really isn't it for them they've got to concentrate on keeping themselves safe in the Premier League so they can go out in this one and say right you know let's get on the front foot you know, let's try and make a game of it let's see if we can upset the apple cart a little bit that makes sense with three central defenders in the side Tarkovsky long and Ben Gibson another player who's not really got going since his move from Middlesbrough. It's not long ago they were touting him for a move to the likes of Chelsea. It's always difficult when you sit on your backside on a on a bench on a regular basis because what happens underneath the first team is not really competitive enough for players of that quality. That's Fernandinho. Jesus, lovely return to Fernandinho. Gundogan. from Mahrez blocked by Charlie Taylor and it's going to go out for a Burnley ball that came back off the City man. It's just the depth of this Manchester City squad, isn't it? It's frightening. The teams they can put out on all the different competitions. And they did get knocked out the Checker Trade trophy, didn't they, the other week? Sunderland beat them, didn't they? The under-21 side, technically. Yes, but you know the, the depth goes right down there. And that's what you're up against. John Stones, who once formed a really good partnership with his opponent Ben Gibson in the England under-21 side. Danilo. Gundogan. So Burnley fans making all the noise, that has been a, a problem at times, if you can call it a problem, at the City of Manchester Stadium. 
Sometimes City fans have uh, got so used to sitting back and being entertained. It's got a bit blasé about it, don't you? Bernardo Silva. Walker made the decoy run. De Bruyne. That's off Jeff Hendrick and spins behind for a City corner. Well, you just want his quality going into the back end of the season, don't you? All the competitions they'll still be in. And the quality they possess. So difficult to pick a team on a weekly basis for him. He's got to try and keep that squad happy, not always easy. John Stones up for the corner, the corner is out of the box, thinking outside the box. And the shot from Gundogan would have cleared three goals. Nothing wrong with that though, I mean, the corner was beautifully struck by De Bruyne. And he wasn't taking a touch, he backed himself to hit that first time. Yes, it went right in the roof of the stand near, near enough, but... That's how confident this Manchester City side are. Nobody picks him up, look, could have taken a touch, doesn't, goes first time. Mentioned Stones going up for the corner only because he's the only outfield player who's yet to score for City in today's side, in fact, in today's squad. Which is quite surprising, actually. Yet to score this season, should I clarify. And at six foot two, you think set pieces, he would get involved. Decision against Gundogan. Very late. Uh, wasn't particularly good, was it? Caught Matej Vidra. We were talking about Vidra earlier, he's still only 26. You know, people forget that, he's been around. I mean, he's 24 catch five goals for his country, the Czech Republic. You know, so he's not a mug. He just needs game time. Game time and service. Brady's ball in. Burnley get a corner. Tarkovsky will stay forward for it. And who does this come off? Hmm. Think it for the referee. Could have gone either way, that one. Burnley did take the lead and were in front at half time in the third round meeting here between the sides last season. Ashley Barnes scored in the 25th minute. City hit them with a four-goal burst in the second half. Stephen Ward is making life a little more awkward for Edison there. Brady in. Walker's header. Taylor under pressure from Mares. He just had a tug back at his shoulder. That's Nick why they're Pope so good. Clear. That's why they're so good, isn't it? They break so quickly on you. And that's been missed. Hold the ball Chances there. missed too. Yeah, just hold on to the ball there. Don't throw it away. You're in a good position. You've got time. Fernandinho. Sort of player. If you told him there was a competitive match every day, he'd play in it. Oh, without a doubt. He's the one player that Manchester City don't want to lose to injury or suspension. He's that important to them. We always talk about. There's the De Bruyne's, uh, Silvers, both of them, but he is so so important to Manchester City's way of playing, way of thinking. This was shown when he missed two games, December 22nd, December 26th, and City lost against Crystal Palace and then at Leicester. The only two Premier League games he's missed this season. Tells a big story. Mares, Jesus. Touch back by Bernardo Silva. Enough Burnley bodies in the way, and Charlie Taylor gets it away. Speed of thought from the players in the final third for Manchester City is quite frightening. The intelligence around that 18-yard box, the movement, not extravagant movement, but intelligent movement. So good to watch. And a bit of skill from Jesus. Fernandinho, who was a scorer when these sides met in the league earlier this season in October. 5-0 Manchester City win. No Burnley shot on target. De Bruyne. Walker just keeps it in. It's a decent cross in too. So the ball, it seems, has crossed the line. I think he's taken the corner flag down as well. It was that good. He has, he snapped, he snapped it. it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he had. Well, that's desire for you. Firstly, it looked like he'd gone out or was going out for a throw in. Slid in there, kept it in. Then the corner flag gets in his way. There's the first one thinking, right, it's going to go out. 
I'm not sure all of it went out. Then there again, he's up, and it does just go out. But I love that design. It, it runs right through this Manchester City squad. There are no passengers. That's the frightening thing about it. Recruitment has been brilliant. Recruitment at great expense. They spend a lot of money on players and wages. Have they spent money on spare flags and poles? Yeah, there's a bit of recruitment needed now for the corner flag. Surely they've got a spare. Just been explained to Sean Dice the delay. Fourth official duties today lie with Tony Harrington. Snapped it clean in half, hasn't he? <laughs> Straight through. Not gluing that back together. <laughs> no super glue would keep that one. Uh... And, and, and the fans are understandably frustrated because they just want the game to go on. We know where the corner is. Do we need a pole? <laughs> Best of luck, Mr. Scott. Well, surely there's a spare one. Where's the groundsman? <laughs> He's actually trying to piece it back together. Oh, come on, dear. <laughs> Smart boy wanted. <laughs> Come on, have a smile on your face. See the police. That's better. <laughs> I don't know about Graham Scott's DIY skills. He was once a promising goalkeeper, forced retirement from competitive football due to a back injury when he was only 27. Pep Guardiola's 150th game in charge of Manchester City today. 106 of the previous 149 have been won. And this has never happened in any of them. I don't think it'll happen in any more of them. Explain to me, though, Gary, why there seems to be a lack of humour about this. Players and officials. Well, have we actually got an... Oh, here, here we, we go. go. Had to go to the in, shed. In your own time. No, he's just had to knock another one up on the lead, hasn't he? He's going to get a big chip when it goes in. Oh, oh he's <laughs> had oh, to put the... The metal little bit so he can slide that in there. Yeah, here we go. Oh, oh brilliant. We're back in business and the game can resume. Well he's he's had his moment in the sun there, hasn't he? This is one of the biggest football clubs in the world. It's quite refreshing to know that Manchester City haven't lost that element of fast that, oh. <laughs> that was around the club for so long because uh, it keeps them grounded. That's brilliant. Manchester City history is a nice touch before the game for the, the team that won the cup in 1969 or those still with us to uh, be introduced to the crowd Tony Book great captain now 84 years young it's fantastic to see that I mean I know how important that is you know our European Cup winning teams you know we're still all here uh, you know so it's great to get together you know, on the occasion it's our 40th anniversary next season there's De Bruyne Nick Pope didn't get it Took his hands away from it, but I think he thought he was going to be beaten. What a ball this is. It's absolutely delightful. That's a striker's dream. No touch from Jesus. Look at this. He's just so intelligent. He puts it in areas that really help his strike partners. Get away with this one, Burnley. I think just because of the quality was so good. I think he gets a nick on it, and I think Pope did too. Goal kick, but I thought there was a little brush off Nick Pope's undercarriage. But how difficult is it to see that when the ball comes in with that pace and that quality? What an ending. Gundogan. Fernandinho. Brady with the flick. Defoe. McNeil chased by Mares, who's trying to get to grips with him. McNeil strong enough. Vidra. Tackled by Stones. That's fabulous from McNeil. The referee might bring that back a little bit because Mares was clearly all over the back of McNeil. He's recently signed a new deal to keep him at Burnley until 2023. There might be some temptations to uh, lure him away, though, if he keeps on with the form he showed over the last few weeks. That's the problem, isn't it? When you've got a little diamond in your side, everybody comes sniffing around. You want to take them away, and sometimes clubs just have to sell them. 
Walker. Otamendi. De Bruyne. Slide draw for Kyle Walker. Pulled back for Bernardo Silva, and it's saved by the boot of Nick Pope. Well, that's how quickly they can do you on the break. One touch, two touch, that's all they do. And that's what does for teams. And the movements are good. Corner taken swiftly. Headed away by Long. City is starting to tick. De Bruyne. Hope comes to Gallup. So Great look, to see him back in action. It is, without a doubt. A lot of time for him. Saw a lot of him last season. He was absolutely superb. One side there. Pulled back. Hits it well. It bobbles just before he hits it. See it there. And the goalkeeper does really well. Gets down. Doesn't matter how you save it. Legs, arms. Just save it. And he certainly did that for Burnley. Injured with a dislocated shoulder in the early part of Burnley's season, which started in July with European qualifying. He was out until the early part of this month. A player who uh, was in such good form last season with his 35 Premier League appearances, keeping Tom Heaton out even when he was back to fitness, that he made the England World Cup squad. Bit of a problem for Sean Dyche to come in future weeks now that Heaton, Hart and Pope are all fit. Somebody's got to go. We've got four goalkeepers in the first team squad altogether. Mahrez, I think we've got five. Actually. Yeah, is it five? Yeah. It's a good effort oh. and another good save by Pope. Well, what a reaction this is! Magnificent stop. It's, that is just instinctive. He hits it that hard. You think, yeah, right, hit it there. And when he does hit it, you think, oh, is it going to go in? No, he's got enough about him to realise that he could be in trouble. Thought he might hit it there, but it doesn't. Comes back for him. That's just dipping underneath, and that's a decent save because of the power and pace it came at him. Danilo can't half hit them, and that had dip, it had swerve, but it was met by a really strong hand. The other two goalkeepers, Burnley, are Anders Lindegaard and Adam Legstins, both experienced pros at varying levels of the game. I've never seen that many goalkeepers on one club's books. That quality. Fernandinho. Taylor. A misjudgment there from Otamendi. Vidra to Brady, who's asked a little bit too much of Dwight McNeil. Ward. Gibson. Hendrick. McNeil. Real maturity on the ball, hasn't it? And he's managed to get through too, that. Desire as well. Taylor. Put it in left-footed. Not, not well. his best, no. He's, he's, of course, a left-back by trade, and he's playing over on the right, the right of a, a back five, if you like, today. Yeah, but the problem is, Chris Wood isn't there. That's all right if Chris Wood's in the team, but Vidra is only 5'11". Not brilliant in the air. He's willing, but if you've got Vokes in there or Wood in there, those deliveries are OK. He overhit that one, but Vidra wants it to feet. Morris, Gundogan, Fernandinho. Just at their own tempo, don't they? All the time. Don't ever rush it. It's all measured. They're the best in the league, I think, with the ball, along with Liverpool. But I think they're the best without the ball when they haven't got it. My word, do they fight hard to get it back? And all the best teams in world football do that. Towards Walker, important touch from Ward. Claims there's another one from Walker, but it will be a City throw. The possession stats just told us that City have had the ball for three quarters of the game so far. Don't think that surprised any of us, to be quite honest. Nothing to show for it, largely thanks to two big saves by Nick Pope. And Kyle Walker's gone in, 
with a bit of a scissor motion to the challenge on four there. Graham Scott right in front of it to have the perfect view. That looked poor, to say the least. Really did. And that was frustration at his first touch, losing possession, losing control of the ball. What happens next? Ben Gibson was having a word with the referee. He's got uh, the yellow card out. I, I don't understand why he's, he's having a word with the referee and moaning, because when we saw it there, it looked bad. We might be wrong, but it certainly looked bad. You can't do that. There, that's touch, and he's annoyed there. People say his feet are on the ground, but you know, it's that momentum that takes you through, the follow-through, it's high, and it's a yellow card. First glance, I thought with the, the secondary motion of the next leg, I thought it was a bit of a scissors, but it didn't look that way when no. we saw it again. I, yellow's probably right. I think it is, I think it was right. You can't lunge, you lose control, that's the problem, when you lunge in and slide in like that. Tell you what, Sean Dyche should have taken this. Just over 20 minutes gone. Nil nil. This team defended reasonably well at the moment. Just that one save from Pope. Oh, throwing duty to Taylor. I think the problem for Sean Dyche is that if he looks to the other side of where the, uh, where the bench is and sees who sat on it. I think he doesn't realise how good this Manchester City team are. If they need something at any stage in this game, my word, that bench is magnificent. Laporte, David Silva, Raheem Sterling, Leroy Sane, Sergio Aguero, <laughs> and 18-year-old Phil Stop Foden, it. one Stop of the uh, brightest talents in the game. Hendrick, blocked and cleared by Danilo. We talk about a chance here. Hendrick tries to tee up the shots, and it's wayward from Robbie Brady, who does have a really good left-footed shot on him. Yeah, disappointed with himself there, understandably. Didn't get many chances against Manchester City. It's a half chance. It's not a chance in the box. Make a mistake, one of the rare ones. Sets him off. Just goes for pace. Look at when he hits it. He's off balance. And how quick John Stones was onto it. Talked a lot about you know, how good Manchester City are, but I think we've all got to say what a fabulous job Sean Dyche has done. Here's Gabriel Jesus. Nice shimmy and turn. Brilliant! Absolutely magnificent from Gabriel Jesus. A forward who just loves scoring goals. He taps them in, he fires them in, he makes them all by himself. Well, this is how good this man is. He's hardly been involved in the game. But all of a sudden, when it comes into his domain, this is what he does. Time another run, I said before the game, absolutely brilliant. One thing in his mind, I'm going to turn, I'm going to hurt you. Maybe the goalkeeper should have been a little bit better, maybe the defenders. But this guy is so difficult to stop. Checks inside, keeps it low around the goalkeeper's feet, which all strikers are told to do. Sometimes it goes in, sometimes it doesn't. But look at this, low centre of gravity, he's on the move. One thing in his mind, I'm going to score here. I'm not sending it up for anybody else. And score he did. Manchester City 1, Burnley 0. The gates are open. Gabriel Jesus has scored his 15th goal of the season. Eight of those have come in his last, well, four and a bit appearances. The pass was fabulous for him, but it was his timing of the run to perfection that got him in behind and once he does that he'll turn on you run at you and encourage you to foul him Bernardo Silva Silva's lift in that's Fernandinho it's an awkward slice doesn't score many because of the nature of the position he plays guess what everybody it's raining in Manchester Bad. We had 24 dry minutes. Yeah, both of those lads there at Nottingham Forest at some stage of their career. And uh, Mr. Clough. Dunch, Ian Wone. Or his connection continues with Tony Lachlan on the coaching yep. staff too. They had a good upbringing. Learned a lot.
to Mendy. Mares to Fernandinho. De Bruyne. To Mendy. Swing across to Carl Walker. Bernardo Silva. Silva's gone to curl it in. Good decision by Pope. Fernandinho. Mores given away. The four is there to win it. Hendrick has to work to keep it. Nice footwork. Had to be nice footwork as well. Stones. They, they pounce on you. You just dawdle on the ball. They're onto you very quickly. De Bruyne is trying to curl that one in, I think, to the path of Jesus. Didn't quite get it right for once. The dilemma Burnley have got now, what do they do? Do they go and say, right, we've got to get back in this game? Do we take chances? Because if we do, we know what will happen. They'll hit us on the break. They're that good at it. It's a real difficult, difficult conundrum for them to say right if we go for it we're going to get taken apart do we sit back a bit and wait for the game to progress and then try and get back in it difficult Gundogan Fernandinho Jesus on the move again and Herring after the ball Tarkovsky was there with him he did a good job that time so aware of what's around him around the 18 yard box just comes alive whenever comes his way in that area it took him a little bit of time Gabriel Jesus as we look at another striking great watching on Ole Gunnar Solskjaer took him a little while has come I guess with the long term idea of being Sergio Aguero's successor he's just having to play slightly second fiddle to him which is understandable he's only 21 yeah, but what a learning curve he's had already. You've got to give him so much credit. Now he goes about the game in the very tender years. To Mendy. There's Mares. Burn the arms in the air, and so is the assistant referee's flag. Adrian Holmes on that side of the field. Not much in it. Decent line kept there by Burnley. It's difficult when you're playing against these players. How how deep do you drop? How much space do you give them? It's so difficult when you've got so many players who can hurt you on a regular basis. You stop one or two of them. There's two or three more that have just come and take you apart at times. Stones. He's good to one. To Mendy. Couldn't do one. Fernandinho. De Bruyne. Fernandinho. City having one of those long spells of possession again here. Fernandinho dictating the pace and the pattern. Very rarely do you see anybody dictate. It's always on their terms, isn't it? Not many teams can live with it. That's the only ones who can at the moment are Liverpool. Bruyne. Danilo. Fernandinho. Just see with the Burnley players, their movement, that it's it's so hard to keep concentration levels absolutely to the max facing this. Danilo to Bernardo Silva. Might be ready to pounce here. De Bruyne. De Bruyne in. 
Oh, and a missed control from Gundogan, it was awkward for him. It's absolutely magnificent to watch, it really is. They just take their time, they're patient, and all of a sudden you get a delivery like this. He's onside, the run's terrific, and for once the touch just lets him down. But everything else in the build-up is just a pleasure to watch. Look at that, perfection. Just dinks it over the top. Stones, safely back to Edison. When you look at De Bruyne, he's only 27, he's got 68 caps for his country. He could go on and how many caps is he capable of getting? He's that good. Title winner, League Cup winner with City. He's not won this one yet, though. Could have been the Belgian Cup. He's a very young player with Genk. I think everybody realised until they win the Champions League, they won't be considered one of the greats. It's Gundogan. And Gundogan goes down under the challenge of Taylor. City appealing for a penalty corner, whatever they can get. Well, I thought he might just unleash that one before the challenge came in. He had the opportunity. You can see uh, Graham Scott's got yeah. his finger to his ear and he's uh, waiting for the judgment of the video assistant referee to see if he's missed anything here. Well, he didn't get the ball, did he? I don't think he got a touch on this. Ooh. Now then. He Mike comes across just... and takes the right foot of Gundogan, doesn't yeah. he? Did he take it first or did he get a touch on the ball first? I think no. Graham Scott's happy. Yeah. And... Uh, Andre Mariner's happy, watching on the screen, and he thinks there was uh, just enough about that from Charlie Taylor to get a bit of the ball and I just put think in the challenge. It just shows how difficult a job it is for a referee to get it right. We get all the angles, we're lucky. He doesn't, he gets one look at it. And from one side, it looked like it was a penalty, the other side, yeah. it looked like he got a touch. I think what we always have to remember as well, it, and it is still a trial, it'll be coming in in yep. the English Premier League next season, it'll be coming into the Champions League from next month. Um, we've got to remember the principle of VAR is to correct clear errors and for missed serious incidents. Well, the ref didn't miss it, and it wasn't a clear error. No. If an error at all. You just don't want any grey areas at all, you want it spot on. I, I just still think an ex-player should be in there, not a top ex-player, any ex-player who knows the, the game. I think it makes sense that you've got both sides of the coin in there discussing it and... I don't be volunteering, you'd much rather be here with me. Oh, absolutely. But I, I just feel it's you know, worth thinking about. One thing we do know about VAR from the World Cup and beyond is that it will not end all debate, so we can still talk and discuss and argue about football all night long, which is great. That's the beauty of it, isn't it? We never want to lose that ability to be able to do that. Step-by-right instruction from Nassas Guardiola and Deitch, who you can always hear during a game. Going back to the VAR, I think one thing it will stop is the diving, you know, the, the cheating for me take that out of the game if you go into that on a regular basis. There's Danilo. Mares. Step over did not deceive Taylor. And the cross was comfortable for Pope. He's one who's not really got involved in the game in the first half a great deal. Mares on the left-hand side. I think he might just fancy it against Tarkovsky right back. Just testing him out a little bit more than he has done. Hendrick. Here's De Bruyne. And a silver. De Bruyne. Mares. Did well to do that. Both away. De Bruyne, Gundogan, Walker, 
Dear me. <laughs> you marvel at those numbers at times, <laughs> although they are pretty standard. Goodness me. Harsh on Burnley to put those figures up in isolation because you've got to have the ball to be able to pass it. And the next discipline when you're playing against a team who have loads of the ball is your setup. And they've not done bad with the setup, it's been quite difficult to break down at times. It's only the brilliance of the pass and the timing of the run that's caused problems for them so far. Another silver. He's a great organiser, Sean Deitch. Gabriel Jesus. Tarkovsky must make sure he stays in the way. Mares, Taylor's in the way of that. Corner, Manchester City. Movement again. Just love to watch it. Like I say, it's not extravagant. It's two, three yards, but it's the timing of the run. Just warning his defenders about the possibility of a short corner. Doesn't look as though that's going to happen. It's the edge of the box, they've got to be careful. Now Bernardo Silva does break from the pack for the short corner. Mares. Nick Pope's shouts went unheeded. I think you tend to lose a bit of concentration if it's zonal or man to man. You're just looking at where you've got to be, and sometimes you lose sight of where you've got to be because they take a short one. Somebody's got to go and take the responsibility of closing it down. Stones. You know what I'd like to do? I'd like to sit down with Pep Guardiola and say to you, right, what is your best 11? What is your... I wouldn't tell anybody I, that he told me. I don't I'd think he'd tell you. A, I'd, no, but I'd look... I'd love him to say and to know, because there are that many brilliant players in this squad. I wouldn't mind betting that he doesn't actually have one. Depends on the day, might be the answer you get. Maybe. I just wonder what Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is learning about Burnley. They're in Manchester again on Tuesday night in the Premier League, facing his United at Old Trafford. Uh, he's here to watch them, but there'll be a much-changed team on Tuesday. And Bit of a different game. There's Bernardo Silva. Nice exchange with Jesus. Good block by Tarkovsky. Look at them trying to win that ball back. They, they're hunting packs. De Bruyne is closing down there, putting pressure on, trying to force a mistake. Great to watch. day in Greater Manchester. It's not bad for January, let's be honest. No. What do you expect in January? Usually we've had heaps of snow by now. Well, they predicted that in December and January, but it's totally wrong. When you go through, just looking at this Manchester City team, the only one over six foot apart from the goalkeeper is John Stones. You know, you don't have to be big and strong like it used to be at times, that just shows you why that's so good for me. It's just so difficult to stop as a unit. There's the closing down again, look, pressure, pressure all the time. Just trying to force that mistake out here. Fucking long gets the ball away. Bounces over the head of McNeil, and here's Fernandinho. Manchester City hunting a second before half-time. De Bruyne. Four nips in. Vidra as well. The four not so well next time round. See, this is why I feel a little bit sorry for Vidra. He's been given a game today where he knows he's only going to get a kick. So what do you learn from his performance today? I think it's unfair. I think he should be given a chance in a different format, obviously the Premier League. Bernardo Silva's there in front of the four. Gundogan. Mares. Oh, it's closed. They've been quite brave, Burnley. They've tried to keep that line on the 18 yard box and not drop towards the penalty spot on the six yard box. It's difficult when you've got wave after wave coming at you. 
Ronaldinho. Here's Walker. Gundogan. De Bruyne. De Bruyne to Gundogan. Gundogan's shot is blocked by Gibson. City corner. Just make it look so easy, this game of football, Manchester City, when they're at their best. And he's going to take the corner. Absolutely imperative that Burnley keep it to one before the break. And from De Bruyne, it was John Stones who came to meet it, and he thundered it back the way it came from. When I was watching that corner, not one of the players was watching where the ball was. All they were c concentrating on was looking at the man, stopping the man. And how, how could he possibly defend when you can't see where the ball is? I don't understand that. Just wondering, that came off Ben Gibbs? No, it no, didn't. It didn't. No, it didn't. Good decision. Well, that's something that's, that's really changed from your playing days, isn't it? It is. I mean... We always say zonal marking, space never scored a goal. Um, I, I always came back and if, if my man scored, I was in trouble. And we all knew that that would be the case. But now, you, you just, how, how you defend when you, you can't see where the ball is. Staggering. Gary speaks with great experience at corners, having been a, a centre-forward and a centre-back. Yeah, and later in my career at Forest, Brian Clough asked me... Uh, Right out of the blue when we got off the coach for an FA Cup game. How do you fancy playing centre half, Gaz? I said okay then. That was it. An hour, hour and a half before kickoff. There I was centre half. Loved it. Not worked on it in training. No, I didn't even know I was playing centre half. <laughs> he just says, "Can you play centre half for me?" I said, "Yeah, okay." Now, Graham Scott across because Kevin De Bruyne was late into a challenge. There it will be a Burnley free kick. The referee's body language suggests that's all it will be. That's all it should be. Yeah. He's got a touch there, no malice intended there whatsoever. Free kick taking will be left to Pope. I'm not even sure it was a free kick, you know. He's just got that touch on it and then his opponent's come crashing through and it looked worse than it was. Instant outrage in football these days. It's uh, well, and the world. Let's not go there. <laughs> no, let's stick to what we know. Ish. Yeah. Bernardo yeah. Silva <laughs> Good it up towards Jesus. There's Fernandinho. Well, I'll tell you what, Edison must be uh, cold and wet because he's stood there for 45 minutes near enough and not had anything to do. I was going to say, he must be bored, but he. He's well used to it, to be honest, and uh, always comes across as the patient sort that you wanted a goalkeeper. <laughs> Debate raging in the English game at the moment as to which of the Brazilians is better, Edison or Alisson. I would argue we don't know because neither of them have much to do on a weekly basis. Yeah, that's a very good point as well. Another Brazil. Chiche, the coach, favours Alisson just. <laughs> It was always like in Spain when Real Madrid and uh, Barcelona, Casillas and who was the other one for Barcelona? I can't remember. Should remember his name. I can't. They only had anything to do. He's going to one. Got a minute to go in the first half, and then we're told that the board will indicate three more, and uh, that was for the the corner flag debacle very early on in the game when. Carl Walker snapped it in up, well, not in half, he took it apart. Yeah, the injured corner flag. City a little bit ragged, you don't see that often. No, a couple of them having a go at him, he's having a go back, which I do like to see as well. And they're after perfection. Gibson. And Nick Pope. Burnley in it in the early stages with two excellent saves, one with his boot, one with his strong right hand. Edison. To Mendy.
Coliseum, isn't it? People sitting back, arms folded. Come on, gladiators, entertain us. You do that and we'll start making the noise then. It's very rarely they don't entertain. I think it just becomes too easy for them at times. Or make it look that way, certainly. Yeah. Danilo. Real Jesus on the move. Seems to be content to knock it about a bit. There we go. The, the gap is getting wider in terms of who's got the ball. It must be horrible just chasing shadows all the time, not having any time on the ball. And that's what you're up against with this wave of blue. Go and do one. Mara switching sides. De Bruyne. Skews behind for a corner off Gibson. Again, nothing wrong with that from De Bruyne. Tries to take it early, get it in a good area. De Bruyne to Mares. Mares was on side. That's poor for Mares. And all the time in the world to pick up an option there. Picked the only one that really wasn't a good one. He's never 100% happy, he'll just be uh, mildly content at the moment with the way it's going. Well, he's prowling around, isn't he? he not look happy. <laughs> Ward, comes into De Forbes. Quite around the stadium now. Isn't it just? Hendrick. These people have just gone to queue for their pies. Before. You, you have early. to stay put for a little while. A lot, yes. of, a lot of empty seats there, look, that's what's happening. The Manchester City goal kick. We are in the dying seconds of a first half that is dying a little bit in front of us. Manchester City 1 0 up thanks to Gabriel Jesus in the 23rd minute. Brilliantly made and taken goal. Danilo's pass, and then Jesus did an awful lot by himself. Otamendi. Danilo. I'm really surprised to see changes at half time for Manchester City. It's Walker. He's the only player on a yellow card. And that's it for the first half at the City of Manchester Stadium. Back-to-back -back titles. In fact, they're still on course for a quadruple, unlikely though that may be at the end of the season. Pep Guardiola would certainly not entertain any thoughts of that at this stage. Haven't won this tie yet either. That will be the main carrot for Sean Dyche to give to his team at the start of his second half. They might have been up against it, they might have been chasing the ball but it's still only 1-0, one, one chance can change the game. That's all they can hang on to, and I, th I think the mentality is just going to be, let's keep it 1-0 as long as we can, and then let's say, I think you'll see Chris Wood maybe come on, folks come on, and say, well, maybe we can get something out of this. Let's keep it a one as long as they can. That's Fernandinho. Just a reminder that it was 1-0 uh, to Burnley, when these sides met in the third round of the Emirates FA Cup last year. At half time, and City hit four in the second half to go through. It was 1 0 to City, and Burnley were last here in October in the uh, English Premier League. At half time, City led 1 0, Sergio Aguero, and again they hit four in the second half. John Stones. Another silver to Kevin De Bruyne. that Carl Walker realised very quickly that he was going to be flagged offside there. But who was it who sprinted after it there, realising that? There, your man, the goal scorer, Jesus, saw that he was offside, thought, right, I'm going to put pressure on here, and he certainly did that. And it keeps Burnley Penn back in the corner. Yes, yes, yes. Stephen Ward's throw, Stephen Ward, 
player who seems to be wrecked by injury and knee problems kept him out for most of it. Fernandinho blocked by Defour, come back from his own long-term knee injury. Vidra now. Taylor. That's Defour. Danilo. Edison's coming for that. I just wonder what's going through Vidra's mind. He must have touched the ball no more than half a dozen times in the whole of this match so far. Just a thankless task. Oh, Otamendi's made a mistake. Here's a chance for Vidra. And Vidra's oh. missed his chance. That was the moment for Burnley. You absolutely have to take advantage of any gifts that come your way when you're away to Manchester City. Yeah, smiles on the fans' faces from Manchester there, but... On Pep Guardiola's face, I'm sure. What an opportunity early in this second half, just to give yourself a chance. I'm saying, if you've not had a kick all, all the game, that comes your way, that can happen. Walker to Bernardo Silva. You know what happens next, City go on and make it too. That's the general script. De Bruyne. De Bruyne's ball in, and Gundogan couldn't get high enough. It's almost like, how dare you have an opportunity on our goal? Well, this is where you overdo it sometimes. Fair play to Vidra. Saw the opportunity, dispossessed him. And you have to say, the goalkeeper does well here. Edison comes out a long way, makes it more difficult. Makes, he, makes him make his mind up early, tries to just curl it round him. It's the right thing to do, but just didn't get it right. Did you ever do that when you played and missed a chance? Immediately look over to the manager. No, is it absolutely <laughs> not, not with your me. manager? No, that's the last person you wanted to look over to. You can hear his voice now, can you? Hit the target, hit the target. That's what he would have said. De Bruyne, he's been dispossessed now by Cork, McNeil. Cork. Talk about not learn, learning from your mistakes. Manchester City with a, a casual start to the second half. Burnley have got a little bit of bounce in their step as a result. Fernandinho. Gets it through to Bernardo Silva. Nothing casual about this counter. Gundogan. Mares. He's taking his time to decide what to do with it. Danilo. De Bruyne. Mares again. Walker. And a silver. Walker. Taylor who puts it behind. What an interesting first five minutes to the second half it's been. Well, there's been more incidents in the first five minutes than more or less in the whole of the first half. Gundogan. Danilo, he's lining it up. Not there he wasn't. Well, saw the scoreboard at the back there. I think it nearly hit that. Whether he's happy or not. No. Big pressure. All the money that's been spent, the squad they've got, brings its own pressure. Both seem happy. John Dyche with some words of encouragement to his striker who's just missed Burnley's best, Burnley's only chance of the match. Yeah, he'll be feeling it as well. Vidra hardly given a chance this season. Chance comes his way. He fluffs his lines. Did score his debut against Olympiacos in Europa League qualifying, but ultimately went sour for Burnley. Also scored against Bournemouth in September in the league. Should have scored at Manchester City a few minutes ago. Now against Hendrick. Fernandinho. Gundogan. Gundogan again. De Bruyne, Bernardo Silva outside, 
Now inside the box to shoot. And it's deceived Nick Pope. Maybe a big deflection on that. But Bernardo Silva takes the plot. It's for the goal. A goal that may have just taken any chance of hoping the tie away from Burnley. Well, how does Vidra feel now? Chance to equalise, and all of a sudden, five minutes later, you're 2-0 down. De Bruyne again, involved, wait, the pass was good, big deflection first, that's what did for Pope. But if you hit the target, or get it on target, this can happen. Checks inside, there's the first deflection, and that does for Pope, just can't keep it out. Nardo Silva takes his tally for the season to eight. Two of those have come against Burnley. And Manchester City have scored two against the Clarets today. One more foot in the fifth round. City two, Burnley nil. Oh, that's how cruel the game can be, isn't it? Should have been one all. Then a big deflection off the goalkeeper and into the back of the net. That's two deflections, both goals. Both came off Pope. But both on target. That's all you have to do. To Mendy plays the simple pass this time. Stones with a, just a slight error, but no danger. Vidras hungrily chasing. Mares. Gundawan to take over. Kevin Long caught him late there. It's going to be a corner, no more than that, and Gundawan's happy to haul his opponent back to his feet. You can guarantee they won't stop now, Manchester City. They won't say, right, 2-0, we've got this in the bag. They'll try and score as many as they possibly can. Stokes. A few cries of shoot. He's never going to. De Bruyne. Danilo. Fernandinho. Just feels like... Sean Dyche is keeping his powder dry with the rest of his team on the bench. The games that are coming up in the Premier League that are so important. Morris. Danilo. Quickly closed by the four. Burnley know that he does like a shot if he gets a chance. He's gone behind for a goal kick. Good. Gibson against Gabriel Jesus. Yeah, talking to those games, we know Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is watching them today because they're at Manchester United on Tuesday. Next Saturday's a, a much bigger, bigger game for Burnley, though, as we have another look at Vidra's miss. They're home to Southampton next week. He does the right thing, but just doesn't wrap his foot round it as much as he should. And this is what happens when you don't put those chances away. Big deflection, that's, that's what it does for Pope. You can't blame Pope for that. Vidra to chase, Edison is out and uh, extends the arms just enough to catch it. He's just happy to be involved in the game in any shape or form, isn't he, Edison, at the moment? Fernandinho. Gundogan, Walker, look at De Bruyne darting into the penalty area, De Bruyne shot blocked, City corner, City threatening to take this one right away from their opponents now. It's just the willingness of the runners, beautifully timed, desire to get in behind, the pass comes, they know the pass will come if they make that sort of run, because the quality all around the 18-yard box is just so evident. See, or he didn't used to see a penalty area like that before a corner, but now the spaces are filled. Walker. Played back to him by Bernardo Silva. Here's Gabriel Jesus. Straight at the keeper. Parried by Pope and away. Again, just comes alive, doesn't he? Danilo. Thought about it for a second. Fernandinho. Never contemplates it. Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
continue. Stones. Walker. De Bruyne. Feel the spirit sapping away from Burnley limbs after that second goal, especially with what proceeded at the Vidra miss. A game of football tends to do that to you now and again. I'll say Vidra will be feeling even flatter now. Hello to Otamendi. He was feeling a lot better. His mistake nearly gave Burnley away back. Should have done. Stones. Mares to Walker. Jesus. Mares. It is on for the shot, and it wasn't far away. Corner deflected wide. How many times when he was playing for Leicester City did you see him do that? You knew what he was going to do, but you couldn't stop it. Look how quickly City take the corner. Bernardo Silva and Gundogan working in tandem, racing across to get the ball moving again. Stones. Obviously good to poke. I think we could have called this, Gary, we're just getting word that there's going to be a substitution for Burnley in a minute. With uh, poor old Matej Vidra going off and Chris Woods ready to come on. Well, there's that build-up again, there's Mahrez, we've seen him do it so, so many times, so many times you've seen him hit the back of the net, it's a decent effort. He sells you so many dummies, it's ridiculous at times. And he always bought. Fernandinho, Scott in the way of Gabriel Jesus. I feel a little bit for Vidra if, he, if he's going to be coming off. I would like to, to have brought somebody on, striker, played him alongside him, just see what could have maybe materialised from a, a partnership up front. Morris, Danilo. Bernardo Silva is further wide left. Mares, De Bruyne, De Bruyne rocket. When he hits them, he hits them hard. He usually hits them straight and true as well. And what is true now, beyond doubt, is that Burnley are out of the cup and City are through to the fifth round. They have a three-goal lead. Oh, this is the beauty of Manchester City. They don't let you off the hook. They don't sit back and say, right, tool doers. They want to punish you. And I love that. When I played, any team I played for, I just wanted to score as many goals. And this is what they do brilliantly. Mores is more involved than he was in the first half. One touch away from him. Maybe should have closed him down a little bit better, a little bit quicker. Mores just tees it up for him. There's the touch. Sets himself up. Lovely back lift just hits it clean as a whistle. Smile on the face of Kevin De Bruyne. Manchester City 3, Burnley 0. Megan and Solskjaer watches on, ready for his United to take on Burnley in the Premier League on Tuesday. And that change has happened for Burnley. Vidra off, Chris Wood on. 
look at the closing down here. Giving him no time at all, Pope, just to take a touch. He has to get rid quickly, and they get the ball straight back. What stage is an opposition manager scouting your next opposition? Do you uh, start to think, you know what, I'm not looking at them anymore. I'm, I'm, looking, I'm looking at City and maybe what we can learn from them. Uh, I'll just go home now. No point in staying. I'm not sure I'll do that. Football obsessive. Ruthless streak to him too. Which people don't see. Just, away by Fernandinho. just this baby face assassin that he was tagged with all those years ago. But you listen to him when he's interviewed. I like listening to him. It makes it sound so easy. He's just given his players a rein to go out and express themselves, and aren't they expressing themselves? Wood offside. That's his first involvement. New Zealander who. Scored the late penalty against Barnsley to get Burnley into this tie. Not going any further in the cup. Going out at the same place where they went out last season in terms of geography, away to Manchester City. They've only made the fifth round once in the last eight seasons, including this season. I just feel if Burnley had been in the top half of the table like they were last season, it might have been a different mindset from Sean Dyche. Be all in the end all is staying in the Premier League. Get away from that relegation area. And this season, this doesn't matter as much, this, this sort of fixture. Maybe would have done if he hadn't had this draw. Yeah, possibly. Possibly. De Bruyne. Fernandinho is Danilo. Fernandinho, who we understand is about to be replaced. He finds Gundogan. Gundogan may be about to shift back into Fernandinho's position because at 3-0 up they're going to go for more by putting David Silva on. Oh, all the best, Burnley. You can understand Fernandinho coming off. You want to protect him as much as you can. You want him for the Champions League, you want him for the Premier League. Get a bit drier. Not much chance of that by the look of it. And will come David Silva then. Joe Hart on the other bench. The only two players involved today who were part of City's last FA Cup winning team, 2011. The, uh, the cup success that ended City's long run from 1976 to 2011 without a trophy. They've come thick and fast since. And you have to give Guardiola so much credit. People say, yeah, he's got all the money to spend in the world, but other people have, and they've not spent it particularly well. And Roberto Mancini and Manuel Pellegrini. Yep. And the likes of Fernandinho. Who, uh, this season, I think, I don't think he's played any better than in other seasons, but He's finally started to be recognised for the job that he does. I think it's the consistency he's, he's having now. The best, one of the best lines, I, keep, I always repeat, great players don't get better, they get more consistent. And once you get that consistency in your game on a regular basis, now you're difficult to stop. One 33-year-old replaced by another who also seems to get better with age. And he, as you say, more consistent. Yeah, and he's got his barnet back as well, which is nice to see. That it's lovely, it's lovely head of hair. That, isn't it? Yeah, a lovely head of hair. Not thinking before you look, I'm not thinking about it. <laughs> De Bruyne, Gundogan, Danilo, Otamendi. What a different tie we could have had. And his uh, slight lapse in concentration that allowed Vidra in resulted in a Burnley equaliser. Look back at the tie at Arsenal Manchester United last night when 2 1 Manchester United at the half time. Romero makes a wonderful save from a Ramsey header, and that would have been 2 2 early in the second half. Again, different tie. Another Manchester City mistake, and Defoe finds McNeil. He should be turned too elaborately. I think he should take that first time. Worth an effort, that. 
came to a, a decent height. His body shape was in the right position. Just have a go. It's almost like you know, the film Sliding Doors, where one thing happens and a totally different path develops as a result. Such fine margins. Where did you pick that one from? I was thinking it earlier, thinking about Nick Pope's career, actually. He went from uh, reserve at Burnley to England goalkeeper at one stage. Only a couple of summers ago, Bristol City bid for him, and he, he might well have made that move to get regular first-team football. Wouldn't have gone to the World Cup. Here's Hendrick. There was Otamendi. This is good from Burnley, though. They're buoyant. They're keep, uh, keeping on going. People you know, talked about the 9-0 Manchester City win against Burton. But I, I watched the Manchester City Shakhtar the uh, Shakhtar Donetsk game. 6-0. We did, I think we did it together. Could have been 10. Yeah. McNeil with the corner. And the stones to head it away. It was back in by Gibson. It's a Burnley presence in the box here. McNeil. Ward. Why not try stuff like that? Why not have a go? Why not do it earlier? Well, that's that's what you yeah, that's a really good point. That's where you do your flicks and your little tricks, try and make something happen. But you can guarantee Vidra will be sit on on the bench now, saying, "Well, why did why didn't this happen when I was on?" Sometimes it was a question of staying in the game at that point. Now the game's gone. Burnley are coming. Hendrick blocked by David Silva. Manchester City being made to work. And they'll be glad of that, I think. Those defenders have got something to do because in the first half they had nothing to do whatsoever. You can still hear him. Tarkovsky, the forward movement, headed away by Stones. That will be, uh, I think, ruled as dangerous play with Chris Wood going at it. In fact, uh, it's been ruled as six of one, half a dozen of the other. And I'd like to see it again. For my money, I don't think they're, they're having a look at that. I think, for my money, Wood had started to make the move first. Yeah, went went for the overhead, but certainly got barged into by the look of it. Mores, there's Cork, Taylor, Hendrick. Danilo. On to Tarkovsky. Still 20 minutes to go. Manchester City at the moment. Extending their winning run to eight in a row in all comps. And uh, in their last six games, including this one, they've now scored 26 goals and they haven't conceded. Graham Scott's in the way again, that's twice. Jesus earlier and now David Silva. McNeil. McNeil once more. It's over Edison. Here's Taylor. Taylor's cross into a, a sky blue congested area. What a delivery that was. McNeil has caught the eye fleetingly today. It was a fabulous delivery in the box. Cork. Better since he came on Burnley. That's a Manchester City throw. I think he gives them stability, doesn't he, in there? You can trust him on the ball. Cork. Conversation about what to do next between Sean Dyche and Ian Wern. They, they do chat a lot during games. Must be resigned to their fate today, surely. Without a doubt, I think there's a great deal of respect between the two of them. Played 
good level, different positions. Morris. Danilo. Morris. Left back position at Manchester United on Tuesday night. Injuries permitting, Bardsley and Loughton ruled out of this one. Yeah, it's not the easiest position to play, I tell you. Well, it is for somebody who knows how to play. I played it once, I got dragged off by Brian Clough. It was that bad. It's Walker who's pretty good at it. De Bruyne, only two in the box. Oh! He's found a way through with a deflection. Oh, no goal. Manchester City have four. De Bruyne just got his head down and hit it hard into the packed six-yard box. In off a Burnley body. Kevin Long, maybe. Not a lot you can do, but I always say, get it in that area. Your teammate might, put, might not put it in, but the opposition might. But it's the timing of his run again. You watch this. Look at him now, now he's started, beautifully timed. Right, I'm going to put in a really good area. And he can't do anything, he tries to get his leg in to stop it. And it just goes nowhere else to go when he gets his leg out. But it's just so good, the, the timing of the run, the pace of the pass, puts there, and oh, what can you do? If you leave it, you've got a man behind you who's going to put it in. So difficult to stop them. Long on goal, longer Burnley faces. Manchester City 4, Burnley 0. OK, let's throw Sergio Aguero into the game. They are ruthless. As I said earlier, I'm delighted. I love to see, see teams do this. I hate when you're in front and you just go off the pace, take your foot off the pedal, showboat a little bit. This team can showboat and take you to the cleaners. Sergio Aguero to come on for Gabriel Jesus. We've got things going with the first goal of the game today. And Kevin De Bruyne, who scored the third and then played a huge part, of course, in the fourth that we've just seen. Well, his fitness levels are getting better and better. Pat Guardiola will know that he's got to protect him a little bit with all the big games coming up. And then will come Phil Foden, who curiously, amidst this galaxy of stars, is the player Manchester City fans want to see the most right now. I don't think they're going to. Pat Guardiola won't do it for anybody else but him the good of the team and himself. The teenager has scored two goals in his last three games. Stockport, born and bred, Manchester City fan all his life. Living the dream right now. Living up to it, too. Hey, without a doubt. Obviously very highly thought of. He's always in Pep Guardiola's mind and his plans. It's interesting, isn't it, with Premier League teams teams right around the world of this stature and in particular in City's case do you side with Pep Guardiola and Foden and his representatives themselves as well go out and loan play more games play more minutes or would you learn more being around this lot I don't think he can go out on loan he's one player I, I would not send out on loan I think he's got to be part of this he, he doesn't feel out of place within this squad and Pep Guardiola wouldn't keep putting him in the situations he does if he didn't think he could do it of how many a game we say that watching this team so many times well, do you think Aguero is going to come on and not want to score Whew. I think again the man who made it 10-0 on aggregate at Burton with the only goal in midweek yeah, but I watched his whole game there you know, when he was on the pitch he was he was interested he wanted to be part of it he didn't slack off which I love to see There's Taylor Pressure from Mares, and he's forced to put it out for a throw in for City. Burnley not going to make their final change of the day now, too. It's going to be Ashley Westwood who comes on and is taking the place of Stephen Defoe, who is still fighting his way back to full 100% fitness, having had a long time out with a knee injury. Straight swap in the heart of midfield. Just talking about Aguero, incidentally his record against Burnley, it's not just Burnley, he's got his record against several teams, but he's got a, a goal a game. 
And in fact, uh, in home games, he scored five times in four appearances. He scored every time he's faced Burnley on this field. Well, I'm sure they'll be very well aware of that. What can he do in 13 minutes? Walker to Stones. Manchester United are through. Manchester City are through. Liverpool and Arsenal are gone. The FA Cup is taking shape. Well, after stages, always encourage more people to get involved. It becomes more important. Did enjoy the, the draw for the last round with the tension building towards the end where Arsenal, Manchester United, Crystal Palace, Tottenham Hotspur were all in there. We we're just waiting for the big clash to come out, and it did. And then you see the smaller teams hoping they get a, yeah. a really brilliant tie to earn themselves drama, money. Oh, yeah. Almost as good as the games. Danilo. Takes the long way around Taylor. David Silva. Mares. What a ball from David Silva that was. Corked as well with the ball. Chris Wood now to chase. Hendrick is furthest forward with him. McNeil arriving. Oh, given away by Wood. Mares onto it. Bernardo Silva running away to the right. Foden. Gunda one. City one goal away from doing to Burnley what they've done to them in their last two visits. Score four in the second half. Foden, Silva. It's not about individuals either with Manchester City. Yes, they have great individuals, but it's about the team team work ethic you know, just look at the goals and the assists you look at Sane who's not out there 11 goals 10 assists that is incredible Mares, 9 goals 9 assists Bernardo Silva 7 goals 6 assists you know you can carry on right through the team that's why they are as good as they are because everybody gets involved every game yeah it's ridiculous Walker City corner, played against Ward. It's become a, a dispiriting day for Burnley in the pouring Manchester rain. Gunda one. Up goes Aguero, and that bounced off Tarkovsky for Pope to catch it. Left Raheem Sterling out there, 12 goals, 9 assists. As that opportunity comes in to defend it, a little bit fortunately there. I think Sterling's possibly the most improved player in the Premier League. Because of him? Yeah. I think his contribution this season has been outstanding. And you look at him for England as well, similar. <laughs> Hendrick. Cork. Westwood. Usually one for stats, but that needs saying. You know, things those those things have just run out. Let me give it away. Mares drifts away from Cork. Bernardo Silva, David Silva. It's a scoop of a save from Pope. Mares, Gundawan. Back with Gundawan. To behind for another corner. Says they'll settle for four. Definitely not us. Look how many shirts are in there, how many blue shirts. Good save as well. That's a big deflection, takes it behind for a corner. It's over to. It's back out to Walker now. 
Now oh, David Silver again. He can't find Gundogan this time. Danilo. Foden. And before he gets in Gareth Southgate's senior England squad. It might not be long at all. No, I agree. Yeah, look, even then, the 83rd minute, still tracked back, gets possession back. David Silva. Morris. Danilo. of Wolves, Manchester City, that strolling around, minding their own business, and suddenly, when they sense the chances there for the kill, they're all upon the opponent. The best in the world do that, with and without the ball. Danilo. Oh, they go down in history as one of the greatest teams. Possibly they can. Long way to go yet. Got yep. to win back-to-back. League titles, that's one step. The big one, of course, is the Champions League for Manchester yep. City. That's the, I think that's the one most pursued by Guardiola this season. Although, I don't know, it, it really seems to be game by game with him. It's a good opportunity this season. Juventus look one of the strongest teams. Real Madrid and Barca have dropped below the standards they've always set. Still very good, but the standards they set were unbelievable. Hello. Just checked his run there, Mares. Oh, what's that penalty. about? What is that about? It's a penalty uh, to Manchester City. Kevin Long, who conceded the own goal for 4-0, has now conceded a penalty that might make it five. He's saying come out, but you've got to deal with it. You're in charge of that. Don't expect him to come out. He might not come out. He was in, well in charge of this there. Right. He's passing. He's passing the book there. Yes, he didn't come. You deal with it. You're in charge of that. You're in front. Look, just play it out for a throw-in. Anything but that. Yeah, exactly. Don't blame your goalkeeper. Yes, he probably should have come out, but you're in possession of the ball there. Deal with it, get rid. I think we needed a video review for that one, and Sergio Aguero is on the spot. Aguero hits the spot. Manchester City have five at home again. Sergio Aguero's record of scoring every time Burnley come to his house continues. City 5, Burnley 0. They're incredible, this team. And that makes Rotherham, Burton Albion feel a little bit better, maybe, that a Premier League side are being taken apart as well. Comfortable penalty. He never felt he was going to miss this. Well, it finished 5-0 when Burnley were here in October. Four goals in the second half, it's repeated again. When they were here in the third round of the FA Cup last year, four goals in the second half, 4-1 Manchester City win. Five in the bag again. It's going to be, well, unless they score more, in the last six games, they haven't conceded, they've scored 28 times. Incredible. Watch out, the Premier League. Watch out, Liverpool in particular. Only trying to get something. Kevin Long will be desperate for them to get something. Fourth and fifth goals down to him. Oh, Vidra will be set in a dark corner somewhere. Oh, that moment is still massive as Wood goes for the ball. Heads away from goal and curses himself. And that's his strength, isn't it? He's coming into the box like that. He's attacked them well. McNeil. After him, Mares and David Silva. Here is Silva. Foden turns and goes. Westwood chases. They're not settling for five. They never do. It was something sinister almost. Guardiola's words after Huddersfield last Sunday. 1-3-0. Guardiola afterwards just said, 
the way we played, we didn't deserve more than three. Gundogan nearly found Aguero for six. It's a joy to watch at times. You're neutral watching this team. You sit with a smile on your face. That's if you can keep up. It's, uh, it's, it's mesmerising at times, and Nick Pope's made an awful mess of that clearance. Here's Danilo. Here's Mares. Mares Aguero. Super blocked by Pope. Stops it becoming six. What to say? Do you see how many converged around the 18-yard box once that mistake was made? The Wolves again. They have oh. the scent. Look how many are there now in forward positions. Gundogan. Danilo. Foden will get to that. Not quite, maybe. Pope's got his composure back after that horrible clearance out of his hands. Look at how, how quickly they got on the front foot here, Manchester City. Three and forwards, then look at the three behind. Six players all of a sudden converging on you. And they get lucky here, it's a decent save, positions himself well. That was silver, wasn't it, the shot? Yeah. Kick again, Silva, foul on Westwood. They don't want to be the team drawn here in the fifth round. McNeil. Did make me laugh in the last round when Jurgen Klopp uh, said about the team he put out and lost at Wolves for Liverpool, and he said that didn't have a choice, Premier League and all that, and also we had the toughest draw of the lot. Well, tell Rotherham that. <laughs> Westwood. Taylor. Westwood. Gibson. All times this half, 52 minutes, 9 minutes later 61, 12 minutes later 73, 12 minutes later 85. They're like buses, they keep <laughs> to a timetable. Hendrick, McNeil, McNeil went for the top corner, why not? Yeah, why not indeed, decent effort. Plenty of confidence, backs himself, good to see. Probably the best move of the match from them. Has to go top corner, far off. Far too used to this feeling against the established big six of the Premier League. You know the teams. Burnley have now lost nine in a row. During that time, they've scored three and conceded 30. 19 Premier, well, 18 Premier League games without a win against the big six since uh, they won at Chelsea against the odds at the start of last season. It's, uh, it's the next step for Burnley if they can keep their top-flight status, of course. But it's. Uh, just getting the odd result against the biggest around. Yeah, they've, they've been capable of that in the past, but you feel with a fully fit squad, they will survive in the Premier League. And that's the magnitude of what Sean Dyche and Ian Wohan have done for that football club. Like a turf more compared to this setup, and uh, it's almost a different sport. Here's Mares, Danilo. Foden had his arm in the air, Aguero wants it. City corner, there might yet be six before the end, there's another minute to play yet. You see, nobody were on the heels there, again there were six blue shirts in that box, desperate to get on the score sheet again. Mahrez in. Aguero, Aguero will shoot, of course he will. Westwood, just a little push, pressure from behind from Bernardo Silva. Nobody's in a great hurry to take the free kick though. No, well, let's keep it at five.
must be satisfied today. There's no smiling there, is there? It's a job of work. Oh, oh there we go. Nah. There we go. Last seconds of the action. Manchester City have done to Burnley what they always seem to do against Burnley. Patient in the first half, ruthless, destructive, dynamic in the second. Burnley ripped apart here once more, and it's Manchester City who go through to the fifth round of the Emirates FA Cup. It could have been different. That big moment at the start of the second half, Otamendi with a lapse in concentration, Vidra missed his chance, and Bernardo Silva, and then Kevin De Bruyne, and then De Bruyne forcing one in off Kevin Long, and a Sergio Aguero penalty made the day end at the City of Manchester Stadium with a final score, Manchester City 5, Burnley 0.